Welcome to this episode of the 9420 podcast, where we talk about the music that we love and the industry that we tolerate. Can they hear my happy pounding? Can they see it in my face? I just get the all around me. Can I keep up with the pain? To a corner, get me up against the wall. All the threats and wicked torture, trying to keep me feeling small. Under the full moon at midnight, the wolves come out. It's cold as ice. Now I'm. Welcome to this episode of the 9420 podcast. That was Robbie Finnegan with Lone Wolf. Hi, Carl and Greg. How are you both doing? Hey, Nicole. Hey, Carl. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. You know, it's weird. Like these these podcasts, there is no preset anything. And basically, when I record them, it's basically depends on the mood I'm in at the time of recording them. <laughs> That's a hundred percent true. And I decide, and this mood today. I have to admit that song. I, I like the way it ended. It built and it, towards the end is really kind of cool. And yeah. I, it's, his voice was cool. The vibe is great. It's very club influenced. I yeah, like it. And but I, yeah, it was really cool. But nothing against Robbie. Yeah. But why do we bother making songs anymore? <laughs> yeah. No, I get it. Oh, you're in one of those moods. Yeah, yeah. like you know, enough songs. You know what? I think there should be a moratorium. No more songs for five years. Everybody, put down your guitars. Shut all the recording studios. What about artists that go on tour with their old stuff? Stop, stop. <laughs> Everybody go. stop going on tour. <laughs> You're going to hate my topic tonight. Stop. <laughs> I think we should stop music for five years. What, what, what's today, 23? All right, two years even. Yeah, I'll go to 25 without any new music. 2025, you know. we could start. January 1, we'll start with new music. Everything now, it's done. We're stopped. Well, it's, it's interesting because... 
you know, all the different conveyances of this music, you know, the CDs and the cassettes and the eight tracks and the vinyl and the, you know, and the streaming, all the conveyances, the catalogs, the stuff that we're familiar with or the recordings from 50 years ago, those always have a life. It's the new stuff that we have a hard time putting through to the marketplace. The new things that aren't familiar, it's hard to get people to give a listen and give a shot. Well, you know, I think that goes back to our, our last our episode last week when we were talking about why are the Beatles so revered. And right. it's probably because it's a comfort for everyone. They know it. They know that they're going to like it. There's no having to be bought into it. And for kids who've grown up with adults who've listened to it, for them, maybe there are new songs, but the Beatles aren't a new band or really a new sound for them. Well, didn't the, the, the rock generation from Elvis on... Prior to Elvis, like, didn't every kind of musical genre just go from, from generation to generation? It's like, the parents had this music, and the kids had this, and the new kids had that, and each one changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When rock came around 1960s, it, it stayed. Right. In, in, a, in a weird way, where now everyone's liking all the same music, so... It's kind of what's happened to hip-hop the last 20 years, you know? I mean, we have a whole generation of people that really haven't heard rock-pop music, They've only been influenced by hip hop. I can only imagine what's going to happen in 50 years from now. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't see Taylor Swift and Billie Eilish being the Paul McCartneys and the Mick Jaggers of, no. of 2075. That's not going to happen. You know who the Paul McCartneys and the Mick Jaggers in the next 50 years are going to be? Oh. Paul McCartney and Mick Jagger. <laughs> You're not wrong. I think that's the way it will go down. Well, like you said, and then, and, and, that, and then, like Greg said, and then Elvis will be a saint. Yeah. <laughs> Elvis, yeah, right, exactly. Elvis will be a religion. In a right. hundred years, we'll be bowing towards Memphis and drinking the blood of Elvis. What's interesting is, is, like a year ago, I believe we were talking about Justin Bieber and how he had a hold on his fans. I have not heard a lick about him. Right, Except for the exactly. fact that maybe he's getting a divorce. Um, yeah. And he wears weird clothes. Yeah, he wears weird clothes, and he like dresses like a. <coughs> it's like a very dumbed down frat boy, like a toddler, right? Yeah. So it just it's one of those things. Like Greg said, I mean, I think it's a lot harder for artists nowadays to really get those artists to be loyal and to listen to everything that they're doing. Katy Perry sold her catalog for yeah. two hundred twenty-five million dollars. Oh, isn't that what just, catalog does she have? Well, that's funny money. She doesn't even write to have those songs. That that's just absolutely funny money. I mean, basically, she did have probably ten to fifteen to twenty million dollars in activity on that catalog over the last few years. But that's a multiple of ten. If she had twenty million dollars in activity, somebody paid her. 10 times that in order to own and control the catalog. Just for the sheer number, I want to see yeah. what Mac- I want McCartney to sell his. I want him mm-hmm. to see what that could be worth. That's got to be worth $2 billion. A couple billion dollars, although I always say on this podcast, I probably shouldn't. But there was a time in my career when I worked for a company that was actually vetting the public performance of the Beatles, and you would be shocked. It wasn't as astronomical as you yeah, think. Yeah, but it again, was. it doesn't matter because either is these other ones that they're buying for ridiculous amounts of money. Right. So based on what they're spending now on, on like Springsteen's catalog, yeah. you know, and and Katy Perry's catalog, to me, Paul McCartney's catalog should be all right. Here's two billion dollars, Paul. Go ahead, give it to me. To some degree, it's what the market would bear. I saw a, a, something on YouTube the other night about the Rothschilds. Uh, oh, yeah. And those folks have, if they even exist, it's a very strange cultish kind of family, but they have $2 trillion. So, and that's not even verifiable. But, you know, if, if, you, got, if you got buyers out there that have got $2 trillion, Paul should go ahead and get $20 billion for his. I guess at this point in his life, he wants to hold on to his, like, you know, legacy and, like, who knows. Anyway, so what do yeah. you have to yeah. talk about, Nicole? Anything I have two real? things. One, I'm, both you're probably going to hate, so it doesn't matter. Um, oh. <laughs> Nicole, let me tell you something. We love you. Well, yeah, we anything, love you. you. Anything you, you say, hate, we you... cannot hate anything you say. No, no, that's right. no that's because you, you hate the fact that I'm up on pop culture, so you hate that I bring up certain things. No, no, you, we rely upon it. <laughs> I know, we're glad you are, because we don't know anything. So, <laughs> speaking of your hold on new music, If you do want that to be implemented, it has to wait until Friday because 
for me, it is like the holy grail of Fridays when it comes to new music because we have NSYNC's Better Place that comes out and we have Ed Sheeran's album Autumn Variations that comes out, which is his first album on his record label. We'll so, be expecting a, a complete review of both from oh, you. Oh, 100% next okay. week. It's, it's literally going to be the Ed NSYNC show. Like I heard... Uh, a sneak, you know, clip of, of the NSYNC song. It's it sounds like NSYNC. It's fine. Well, yeah. I mean, 25 years later, they're releasing something that's NSYNC-esque. And I did have my daughter listen to some old NSYNC stuff last week. And she was like, Mommy, this is actually good. I was like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> It, it, I mean, well, once again, it's familiar, and it's you know, familiar. It's, it's what it's, we like. You it, know, it's, it's what I grew up with. So, yeah, exactly. I'm gonna like it, it's just, just like you like the Beatles. Nostalgia. Yes, nostalgia. Except there it's not nostal- nostalgia. It's involved. not nostalgia because it's new now. So, <laughs> you know, we had that we had that thing where um where why aren't the monkeys in the Hall of Fame? Yeah, you know, I, I read an article that they are banned from the Hall of Fame. What? what? Yeah, that they're they, they can't be in because Jan Winter or whoever has banned the monkeys because they, they can't get in according to. Well, he did, he recently got canceled himself, so Jan Winter. Yeah, uh, for something. Really. For some stuff that for, for for some transgressions in the '80s that weren't transgressions then, but really? they evidently they are now. You know, it's like now, it doesn't make any sense. How could you be banned from the well, Hall of so Fame? Well, so it's not. It's what you're not Pe- famous? No, it's that <laughs> Peter Tork has claimed that Jan uh, Jan Wenner, Jan, is, I think it was Jan. Jan Wenner is uh, the person blackballing them from the honor of being inducted. So it's it's more of a rumor than an actual. Well, he won't be that. on the he won't be on the board for long. So yeah, you know, well, he'll he'll be on the board. He's the whole thing. Jan Wenner is Rolling Stone magazine. That's all it is. Uh, what has he got to do with the Hall of Fame? Did they they cre- own he created it? it. Yeah, yeah, he created it. Yeah, I did right. not know that the Rolling Stone Enterprises oh, yeah. uh, owned the oh, yeah, uh, totally. Hall of Fame. I did not know. Mm-hmm. I think the Moody Blues aren't in it yet, right? They didn't get them in there. They, they, there's certain bands he didn't like, so they're not in it. That's but, hilarious. It's like the arbiter of taste or, for you know the world as far as rock and roll is concerned. Yeah. Uh, give me a break. What's funny, even though the, the monkeys are claiming that they're blacklisted from the hall of fame motley crew is actually banned i thought they were in it no so motley crew is banned from the rock and roll hall of fame for bad behavior I ain't <laughs> yeah got a they, with they that. banned them They're back in april yeah. but how could you ban a bad because bad behavior is part of rock and roll i know if there is no bad behavior rock and roll probably wouldn't exist right. i don't think well i don't think anybody would be at a, any great loss culturally if the rock and roll hall of fame didn't exist to be honest with you mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's just a, it's a business in and of itself. Oh, it's totally stupid. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous, you know, so. I mean, I guess there have been some interesting kind of collaborative uh, live performances at the shows. Have you ever been but, there? No, uh, yeah, the one in Cleveland. There. I've been there in Cleveland. Yeah. And uh, basically what it is, it's basically the Hard Rock Cafe without food. <laughs> and, and, it's, it's all it is. It's the same stuff. It's just like there's, there's no waiter. Yeah. You know? Questionable, questionable provenance, the whole bit. Yeah. So I don't know. So what else? So, so that no. that's that's both. Well, no, no, that's not both. That's one because if you <laughs> one, I'm gonna come next week, and you just have to be prepared that I'm gonna talk You'll about these reviews. songs in depth yep, and reviews, you and you're gonna yep. have to just bear with me. I may have to have you guys listen to the Ed Sheeran just so you understand. Right. But the second thing, and this is kind of a crossover from pop culture into the NFL, but I don't know if you saw, but she who shall not be named is apparently dating an NFL player called Travis Kelsey, who is uh, a part of the Chiefs, Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah. And that dude's personality is so egregious that I don't know how much you know about it, but... I know he's a three-time Super Bowl champion. He's so dislikable. It's unbelievable. What is interesting is what people are now calling the Taylor effect. Because now she is dating him, even though he was a very prominent NFL He's player. He's prominence. won Super Bowls. Men have liked the fact of how he plays and stuff like that. But now women are tuning into it. And his uh, what's gonna happen is jersey sales what's have gone gonna up. Happen, viewership men are has gonna gone hate up. Him. 
Yeah, men are going to start hitting him. Absolutely. And I, 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 I give it a month. People, people already do. People with taste and decorum. Let me just say this, and I'm not going to say another word. He's culturally confused. And if people out there think that's dog whispering, maybe it is. But he's culturally confused. What does that even mean? He's a weird dude. I know nothing about him. He also has an older brother, apparently, in the NFL, too, and they have a podcast together, believe it or not, called In like New Heights or something like that. To me, it's one of those things like, yeah, he's getting the Taylor effect. One, they're probably not going to last that long. I think she should have dated somebody like, you know, Clint Eastwood or something like that. That would have been much better. You know, I had a little trepidation about tonight's episode or today's Why? episode or this most recent episode because I got so involved and kind of hyped up for the Beatles episode that I didn't think this episode would be as much fun. And lo and behold, you didn't even know I was going to bring up the three least favorite people on this episode all at once. Yeah, right. In sync, Ed. And well, you know, I don't, I don't have a problem with any of those really. I think it other should be, than it should be and and sunk. <laughs> and uh and sunk and ed, Sh- ed, Sh- ed Schmieren, go ahead no so you know how we were calling them i think it was a couple maybe like a month ago we were talking about ed and we were wondering what his fans call them and i said probably the sheerigans <laughs> apparently it's the shirios shirios no it, it, it's they're the shirios <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All right, let's listen to another single by Robbie Finnegan called All That I Had. But before that, let's listen from our potential partner called Nash and Tune. In this episode, we are featuring a local Nashville company called Nash in Tune. Nash in Tune is the most exciting country site to get you in tune with new music, fun events, and the Nashville life. For more information, you can go to their website, which is nashintune.com. That is N A S H I N. T-U-N-E dot com.
on the Capitol years with Frank Sinatra when he starts singing a song. I forget what song it was. And all of a sudden they faded it out. At the end of it, he goes, is this one of those fade away records? <laughs> fade away, yeah. <laughs> He didn't, he didn't like fade. I right, hated no, that. You know? no. So this, this is one of those fadeaway records. I really like this artist. I'm gonna I'm gonna check out more. This is uh, sounding really very precise and pristine and kind of cool. It's got a neat vibe. I, I like it a lot. Well, we did speak to Robbie. If you would yeah, like to I, get I to know him get better, to know him better. Yeah. in our questions of the week segment. So the first question that we asked Robbie is to tell us a little bit about himself. Hey guys, my name is Robbie Finnegan. I'm a singer-songwriter from Dublin, Ireland. I currently live in Toronto. I've been living here the last six years. Um, Music is my absolute passion. I have been doing music since I've been a kid and I've released a few singles in the last few years in which you can check on Spotify. Um, I took a step back with releasing music. I wanted to develop myself as an artist and really just get better at my songwriting and work with different uh, musicians and different producers. So I'm excited. I have an EP coming out later this year and I will be releasing my first single from that EP, Lone Wolf. I can't wait for everybody to hear it and feel free to go check out my music. The accent's pretty well, good. Well, that's super cool. I mean, the idea, I, I don't know if this is true or not. Probably a lot of artists would take exception to this, but... If you're from Ireland or if you're from the UK or if you're from New Zealand or if you're from one of those spots, I have a a sneaking suspicion that it's easier for you to be discovered or break through than somebody that's in Des Moines, Iowa. I I could be wrong about that, but... I actually agree with that. I think we all have a fascination with the overseas accents and lifestyle and what what they do and how they but do but the it. markets so are smaller you know that's what, that's what yeah. i'm saying i mean the whole of europe is like you know texas and new mexico right landmass wise and there you know there are a ton of people in those centers but i just think you might have a better shot at being discovered and getting a ton of uh, streams that's why, too, a lot of people in the last year from the U.S. have gone overseas to tour and do, like, maybe, exactly. like, a 10-stop ten, a ten tour yeah. and, you know, have a, have a good time, get new fans, and then come back over here and try to do yep. it again. And so. there's a lot of passion, you know, in the U.K. and in those places that I mentioned. There's a lot of passion for new music, you know, so. What else do we ask you? Well, the next question we asked Robbie is what music artists have influenced your career so far? Artists that have inspired me, I would say Amy Winehouse is a big inspiration for me. Uh, I take a lot of inspiration from her, um, especially when I'm doing vocal arrangements as well. My voice um, really complements that type of sound, that jazz, blues, soul type of sound. Um, I listen to a lot of old skill stuff like Otis Redding. Um, he's one of my big inspirations as well. And then a lot of new stuff like Maverick Savior, Rag and Bone. Uh, I love 90s R&B. So TLC, Craig David, they were big inspirations. Um, I love garage music as well. So I try to take those different sounds and you'll you'll hear that in a lot of, a lot of my new, new music. Um, but yeah, I would say that's definitely uh, some of my inspirations. You know, Otis Redding, do you know much about Otis Redding? No, I don't. Uh, so they make. I know he got killed young in like '67 in, in, in a car accident or something like that, right? I don't know much about it other than Doc of the Bay. I don't know much about him either. I know that he was a staid, tried and true kind of workhorse blues and soul singer, a stylist, and I'm sure those records are super cool. And if he's taking that as inspiration and being influenced by that, that's. You can't go too far astray. So what else did we ask, Bobby? So we asked him our last and most loved question. But what is one service in the music industry that is not currently offered to indie music artists right now that need to be? I don't think we're missing a lot at the moment. I think it's the best time to be an independent artist right now. I feel like if you do your research, there's tons of platforms out there that are free of charge that an artist can learn from before releasing because it's one thing being creative in the studio getting your music together but you need a strategy plan it's no good if you if you don't have that behind you um right we can share our music but you need to have do your research and that's what it really comes down to 
Um, there is a ton of platforms and podcasts and stuff like that that you can learn from. I definitely know when I released my last singles, it was trial and error. Uh, and I've definitely learned from that. But I think we are in the best time to, as an independent artist to be getting our music out. Uh, we've got so many good social media platforms like TikTok being the number one music social platform. Um, so it just comes down to the artists just really doing their research um, and finding opportunities. I don't really think there's a lot that we're missing at this time. He's right. Mm -hmm. All these other ones are like babies crying. They got nothing to do. He, he <laughs> right. knows it's yeah. out there. Just do the work yeah. and, and it's there. Yeah, yeah. I like I him. Agree. I like the production on those tracks that we heard from him. I was just struck by the output in general. Uh, maybe he's trying to get that gigantic bottom that you hear in the clubs. I do think it's club influenced. So what I would do if I were him is I would take this EP and I would do 12 inch club mixes on everything. And I would just paper the clubs with that stuff and see if you could get some recognition and some uh, airplay. Anything else, um, Nicole? I the, 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 think we're good. <laughs> did we discuss anything of any value to any human being? We did. We discussed the fact that NSYNC and Ed Sheeran are about to make my weekend. So. <laughs> So basically, we could do that in three seconds in the beginning and be done. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. And kudos to Robbie. Yeah, he was he's cool. making cool stuff. Yeah. Definitely, definitely yeah. cool. All right, man. Get us out of here. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the 9420 podcast. For everything that we spoke about, you can go to our website, which is 9420.com. That's the number is 94 and the letters T-W-E-N-T-Y. Till next time, we'll talk to you all later. 